Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next training video where we will break down a certain aspect of the football game that can provide challenges. In this edition, we're going to look at scrimmage kicks. And as we know, the kicking game can oftentimes provide challenges even to the most experienced official. We know that the kicking game can provide goofy, weird, and odd plays that sometimes leave us confused. It's important to work as a crew together when confronted with penalties or strange plays during a kicking play. So let's look at a handful of scrimmage kicks and talk through some best practices and mechanics. An old adage in officiating is that a kick is a kick is a kick until it's no longer a kick. And we've talked about that already this season. So on this scrimmage kick, we're going to look at why that old adage is important. And we tell ourselves that for a couple of reasons. One is as a reminder that a kick is a kick is a kick until it's no longer a kick in case the ball breaks the goal line plane and goes into the end zone. Of course, then we have a touchback. It's also important to remind ourselves that a kick cannot be advanced by the kicking team. So let's look at this play. Now, before we roll the clip, let's look at the formation here. And we're going to see that we have five players in the offensive backfield. This is a pretty easy call. The big line, the 40-yard line, is our line of scrimmage. And we have the receiver nearest the line judge off the line, along with four other players. So we should have two flags at the snap here for an illegal formation. And this is going to be important as we watch this clip develop. So as the ball is kicked, we're going to have a muff by the returner at the 20-yard line. And as they slip and fall, a member of the kicking team picks up the ball and runs into the end zone for an apparent touchdown. So let's watch that again. And once again, we're going to see a muff by a member of the return team at the 20. The ball is picked up at the 15. And the kicking team runs into the end zone. So this begs the question. Where should the next snap come from? So let's ignore for a moment that we don't have a foul for an illegal formation because the crew did not throw a flag for that. So going with what the play did do, where should the next snap be? Well, the answer, of course, is the 15-yard line and first and 10 for the kicking team. The return team did muff the punt, but a kicker cannot advance the ball. Remember, the kicking team cannot advance the ball. That's why we tell ourselves a kick is a kick is a kick until it's no longer a kick. So again, ignoring the fact that we had an illegal formation on this play, the kicking team should put the ball first and 10 at the 15. Let's see where the crew put the ball next in play. And we're going to see here it's at the three-yard line. And yes, that's because they indeed did award a touchdown. Now. This two-point conversion is successful, and the kicking team wound up winning this game by three points. So it's important for us to make sure that as a member of this crew, we step up and be a crew saver and ask ourselves, how could a, the kicking team score a touchdown on a play in which there was no fumble? But if we go back to the beginning of this play, and again, look at this illegal formation, if we just nail the basics here and understand formation rules, we should have a flag here for an illegal formation. If we had a flag here, we'd be able to have this penalty enforced five yards from the spot and they'd re-kick and we would save a lot of the mistakes that happen at the end of this kick. Let's look at another clip here and the importance of understanding penalty enforcement and the status of the ball when we throw a flag for a foul that happens during a scrimmage kick. And again, this is not a scoring kick. This is a punt. So let's watch this clip. And we're going to notice the line judge throws a flag for holding against the return team for the player at the bottom of the screen. And this is a correct call. We get a takedown hold right around the 30-yard line, and the line judge does an excellent job of picking that up. Now, their flag's off by about five yards. They will run in, and they'll adjust that to the proper spot. 
So it's a great job by the line judge looking where they should be looking, not at the returner, not at the ball, but at the blocks in the middle of the field in advance of the returner. So let's watch that again. And we're gonna notice a couple of things as this play develops. First off, we have a snap, a kick that crosses the expanded neutral zone, and a foul that occurs before the end of the kick. These are all elements of post scrimmage kick enforcement. This is a special kind of loose ball play and it has special enforcement. So PSK or post scrimmage kick applies to any foul by the return team other than illegal substitution or illegal participation that occurs before the kick ends during scrimmage kick plays. So not during a try or a successful field goal. The foul must occur beyond the neutral zone, which we had here, during a scrimmage kick play in which the kicking team would not be next to put the ball in play. So we have all elements here of post scrimmage kick enforcement. So as we watch where the kick ends, we're gonna see that the kicking team kills the ball around the 15 yard line. So where should the next snap be from? Well, if we enforce this properly under PSK enforcement, we'd enforce half the distance from the end of the kick from the 15 yard line to the seven and a half. So let's see where this crew enforced the penalty to. So as we see here, the crew enforced this 10 yards from the previous spot, which wound up resulting in a first down for the kicking team. Now this is a nine point game early in the fourth quarter. The kicking team wound up scoring to go down by only two points. So again, as a member of this crew, it's important to step up and be a crew saver and understand post scrimmage kick enforcement. It should also be a point of emphasis that you talk about in your pregames. So a kick is a kick is a kick until it's no longer a kick. This is a foul that occurred during the kick by the return team. They're gonna be the next ones to put the ball in play. And it was while the ball had crossed the expanded neutral zone. Those are all elements of PSK enforcement. And this should have been the return team's ball first and 10 at the seven and a half. We all know from last year that the Oregon interpretation of a defenseless receiver was clarified. And this year at the Federation level, national level, it was further clarified. And this is our second season of understanding what a defenseless receiver is. Oftentimes we think of this as a receiver on a pass play, but it's also the potential receiver of a scrimmage kick. So let's watch this play and let's ask ourselves if the contact against the returner was legal. So as we watch this play again, there are many definitions of a defenseless player. One of them is a kickoff or punt returner attempting to catch or recover a kick or one who has completed a catch or recovery and has not had time to protect himself or has not clearly become a ball carrier. So again, as we watch this one last time here, all of those elements are true. This player has not had an opportunity to become a runner or to defend themselves. So this should have been a foul here for a hit against a defenseless player. And the back judge is an excellent position here and also could have had help from a wing. We talk a lot in these videos about proper mechanics and the statewide mechanics committee put a lot of time and thought into the mechanics in an effort to keep officials safe, but also put them in position to be able to officiate plays to the best of their abilities. When it comes to scrimmage kicks, let's just have a quick reminder on proper mechanics. The back judge should line up on the wide side of the field. Here we are in position five, so they should be closer to position one on the wide side of the field. They will get on their radios and let the wing official who's opposite them on the shorter side of the field, in this example, the head linesman, let them know that they're gonna be releasing once the snap has been cleanly possessed. The other wing will wait for the kick to cross the line of scrimmage, 
and then work their way slowly down field. And let's watch why this is an important mechanic on a play like this. And we're gonna notice that the back judge has gone to the near side. There is a lot of room to the wide side here, and they're gonna end up getting straight lined on this play. So now we have the returner with the ball. Had the back judge been towards the center of the field, they'd be able to look in advance of this runner who doesn't have anything, anyone within 10 to 12 yards of them at this point in time. And they're gonna notice, excuse me, they're gonna miss a clear block in the back there, which definitely springs the runner for additional yardage. Now, just a quick reminder, the coaches, please stay out of the restricted area while the ball is live. But again, let's watch this and understand proper mechanics. The back judge should be towards the middle of the field. They'd be able to look easily in front of the returner. They are now responsible for blocks. The wings will pick up the runner. And again, we missed a block in the back here. That should have been a fairly easy pickup. So again, just remind yourself of proper mechanics. This is why we pregame. And just a reminder, the back judges should go to the wide side of the field. Well, that's it for this training video regarding scrimmage kicks. Again, we know that scrimmage kicks can be some of the most difficult plays during a football game to officiate. But with proper mechanics and rule knowledge and the willingness to step up and question a ruling or enforcement, we can all get better at these potential plays. Good luck with your games you have this week, and we'll see you in a future video.